What's up, Denver Digs? We're right at 29th and Tennyson today, and we're at Slow High Bike and Coffee. Let's go in and find out what the Slow High Bike and Coffee is all about. Come on. What's up, Denver Digs? What's up, Denver Digs? What's up, Denver Digs? And we are in for a treat. Let's do this. What's up, Denver Digs? Hot spot alert. You gotta get down to slow high because I'm here with Adam and we've got a really unique concept here. But man, is it cool and it's a great vibe in here. Thanks for having us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Yeah, you nice bet. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. So we are currently in the coffee shop. Yep. Okay, we're gonna take and travel a little bit, um, not too far, to the bike shop. Uh, here in a minute, but let's get started here. I see a ton of local roasters, beans that people can purchase and grind. We've got the machines back here. Yep. We see all sorts of food everywhere. Give our viewers an idea of what they're gonna experience when they step through this door at Slow High Coffee. Absolutely. Yeah, we have, so at Slow High Coffee, we have kind of, you know, do really well with our nicer coffees, a lot of light roasts, um, moving into mediums. We do all our co-brew on hand. We also source all of our beans from local Denver roasters. Okay. So anything from Pablo's, Huck Coffee, Commonwealth, formerly Commonwealth, now Huck, things like Floyd's Leadville for CBD. We, everything is kind of Colorado focused. We really cater to our neighborhood, you know, like the Slow High, West Highlands area. So okay. that is our main clientele that comes through. A lot of families and a lot of working people that are just in our neighborhood. Yeah, so you guys are like embracing that community feel. Yep. By endorsing other coffee uh, roasters. Yep. And featuring other products here. I see anything from muffins, cookies, apple ciders, you name it. You mentioned CBD, my favorite breakfast burritos. Yep. Um, is there anything we're missing in terms of what our your clients can uh, they can participate in when they come in here to sell our coffee. I mean, we're definitely, besides our coffee, we have all of our burritos are handmade only for us. And so our burritos and some of those things are definitely we're known for. Okay. Um, they're fresh every day um, and excellent. So I would say that's the, one of the other big things in the coffee shop. You know, a lot of times on the weekends, we'll have like a line out the door. We will also do things with Berkeley Donuts on the weekends. Okay. So that's a really cool thing with hops and pie that we have a partnership with. So we have all that come through. A lot of times on the weekends, We'll have, you know, kind of uh, pop-up things where we'll work with other brands that will do stuff here. But again, you know, mostly community-focused, yes. all within our neighborhood. Okay, I love that, man. That's what this uh, program is all about: is just featuring community-based people. And Absolutely. you guys have really embraced that by featuring all these products and supporting them uh, in many different ways. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Mike, it's really cool because we're here right now in the yep. coffee shop. Okay, we're you're right on Tennyson. This is an awesome location. What do you say we go check out the bike shop? Yeah, let's head on over. It's, right. a, it's a long walk. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna see what I can do. All right, we made it. So Somebody had to do it. Yes. So here we are in the bike shop already. We are very like a small, you know, neighborhood focused bike shop. If you look around, you'll obviously see that we don't have a lot of square footage. Um, we do a lot of volume out of our goofy little location. And we do focus on things that a lot of other shops don't. Okay. So I would say that's another unique aspect of us. You know, we have all these, as you'll see, cargo bikes, electric bikes, and then we still do regular mountain bikes, all the service that goes with that too. Um, but again, really embracing like our neighborhood is still going back to that community aspect. 100%. And, and just what the neighborhood wants of us is what we'll do. So as you look through the shop, you see a nice variety but when you peel back the curtain, you've got more repair stations downstairs. Yep. You've got warehouses out back. You've got warehouses down the street and you have another location. Absolutely. So if people are looking for travel, yep. uh, two wheel, all two wheel travel uh, and bicycles, 
What can they expect at Slow Hide that's different from other bike shops? So I would say the biggest thing is our cargo bikes. We are known to as one of the cargo bike dealers in the Denver, even whole front range area. We get people that drive from all over for that. But we do a lot of things that are like kid hauling machines. You know, like we have these monster bikes that are you know, meant to hold, you know, two extra kids. Like I commute with my five and nine year old everywhere. And, you know, we cover lots of ground, but we are known to, to be that category of bike shop. Um, they come in and some people will be like, what is this thing? It's huge, it's long and, and it's fun, but it's, it's kind of, again, it's what the community does. We live in a great location for getting to and from schools, to and from work. And so it's, it's really worked out well for us. Yeah, and even you're located in Golden and yep. you're able to commute because of, well, A, you're in great shape, but because well, you also have like some power behind it. Yeah, we're a huge, we've definitely embraced the electric bike market and I wouldn't do that commute without electric. Like I do cover probably 2,500 miles a year on it. Um, I rack up the miles cause I go on back and forth to Golden, but I can do that cause it's an electric cargo bike and okay. I can drop the kids off at school and I can go do all those fun things. And it only takes me 10 to 15 minutes longer than driving, even though I'm covering some 15, 16 miles one way. Yeah. So I yeah. love it. I mean, I'm seeing some of these bikes that will run an hour with like 330 pounds on. Oh, it. yeah. I That's mean, I'll impressive. get I can get like mid 40 miles out of a charge on one bike uh, on that set of even including hauling my two boys. Okay. And they're not like, they're huge. Okay. <laughs> yeah, feeding them right. Oh there. yeah, so, absolutely. Um, good, so if they don't have an electric bike and they need a tune up or yep. a repair or anything like that, is it a great place to come here? Absolutely, we still do full service on all bikes, anything from suspension work on mountain bikes. Um, we do a lot of stuff with electronic shifting, high-end gravel bikes is one of our other favorite things because we all ride that, so we're all a little addicted to it. Okay. Um, but we're known a little bit to do, you know, still high-end service just because we do electric bikes doesn't mean we're not way into mountain bikes and gravel bikes and road bikes as well. One of the things we were talking about is that you guys have this robust knowledge of electric bikes. Yes, you can purchase beautiful new bikes here, but if somebody's got like, a, a, you know, an electric bike, they can bring it here because you guys can probably problem solve it and repair it for them. Right, we will do our best to work on all types of electric bikes. It's a big thing for us to like, not have a customer come in and feel alienated just because it's not a bike we sell. And so we'll have people come in with all types. We'll go through, we'll run diagnostics on all these different e-bikes and do our best to keep them on the road. It doesn't always work, but we will sure do our best. So the feeling that I get when I walk in here is I was greeted warmly uh, by the staff in the coffee shop. We've got technicians back here that are, you know, just uh, engaged with uh, anybody that walks through the door, I love that. I hate walking into places and it's like nobody wants to help you. Correct. Um, and you have an intense community focus uh, to embrace this neighborhood in the coffee, snacks, yep. treats, burritos, and transportation that they want. Uh, is there anything else that our viewers should know about Slow High? I think a big thing for us is we try really hard to give back to the community that supported us. So we support a lot with Bicycle Colorado. We do Denver Food Rescue. So a big thing we're doing right now is we're getting them, um, fulfilling a grant with them where they get 10 different e-bikes. We've already done six in the past and these are all e-bikes and these big cargo bikes that are gonna deliver food all around Denver to some of the lower income people. Okay. And so it's a really good way to kind of give back to everybody that's supported to us and feel like we're doing a good thing with a cause. So we do a lot of those things as well. We have another thing where we're helping getting uh, high school kids or, or kids on bikes that don't always get to get out. And so we have a whole program where we donated bikes to gain money to buy more bikes so that the schools could have, you know, just a whole kind of setup to take kids out on rides. Okay. So I think a big thing is you can't just be a business establishment without doing your best to get back to what you believe in. Okay. Love it. Kindness, skilled technicians on either side of the wall, an embracement of community through giving back. Congratulations, man, on all the success. Yeah. You've been here a long time, weathered a lot of storms. Yeah. Um, thanks for having us today. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you so much for coming over. All right, Denver Diggs, get on down to Slow High Coffee and Bikes. Let's go.